Alright, so this is Eldon back here with Crazy Dad Camaro. Um, had a couple of interesting developments here as we've gone along. I've been doing a bunch of testing on stuff, trying to track down that fuel pump problem. And uh, we're looking, I've been talking with a friend of mine who's an expert mechanic, has been for maybe 50 years now. And he's pointing me down a couple of paths. And we're, we're looking like that. I possibly could have a bad computer on this thing and maybe even a, well, or possibly a crank sensor, crankshaft sensor that's causing things not to work here. And uh, I've run into a couple other things as I've gotten into this thing. I found out as I was playing around with the dash in there that this car actually has 270,000 miles on it, not 170,000. And also I did get the motor to start once at one point in time and it really didn't sound good I think there's some problems going on there so I'm suspecting that we've got a bad motor here and one of the things I don't want to go out and spend $35 putting a crankshaft sensor in it and you know another $35 on another sensor doing this and that trying to get that problem solved I found um, a couple of different cars that have both engine and transmission in them and both of them have one has 85,000 one has 88,000 miles on it and I think I'm gonna pick those up and put them in here I can get the one I think I can probably get for about a thousand bucks and then I get a but nearly new engine to put in the thing I mean something with 85,000 miles on it really in this era of fuel injection stuff doesn't that's not really that much wear and tear so I think I'm going to do that, and yeah, it takes the budget up another thousand bucks, but we're still in the low buck category here, and I'll get an engine transmission that it, I can rely on, that I'll be happy with. So I think that's kind of the direction that we're going to take here, and I'm going to have to order those things to get them coming. Um, it'll take maybe a week for them to get here, because they'll have to be shipped in by truck. And... Uh, I think in the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these other loose parts on that we picked up at the wrecking yards and different things the other day and uh, keep this project moving so that it's fun to keep going here and keep posting some videos. So rather than getting a running car that you're going to see on the videos real quick, what you're going to see is we're going to do some of the cosmetic transformation on it first and then we'll get that engine and tranny pulled out when they get here and swap them over. So that then we'll have a running car. And I, I suspect we may still end up with a computer that we have to get in it, but I'm not too worried about that after talking to my buddy. Um, they're plentiful and around used, and he said he wouldn't worry about putting a used one in it. So that's kind of the direction we're going to take here. Um, I haven't quite decided which thing we're going to do first, but uh, I'll probably get my boys out there and help me, and we'll swap out the hood and do some of these other things that need to be done on it pretty quick. So... Here it goes. Let's have fun with the Crazy Dad Camaro. It's still going to be a fun low buck project. I'm excited about it. Hey, I just thought of a couple other things here as I was uh, getting ready to put that video and post it on uh, up on YouTube here. I thought of a couple other pieces that I ought to talk about here that kind of fit into what we're what we're doing here, so that the concept of why I would put another engine in this thing makes a lot of sense. Um, first of all, there's obviously, and this is we're all going to run into this. This is budget thing. So I've already spent money on this car. I could say, oh, scrap the project. Let's move on and do something else. Because i got several more sitting around. But, you know, when you get money invested in something, you get kind of committed to the project and you don't want to quit and give up. So obviously that plays into it. You might, if you run into something like this, just say, you know what? No, it's time for a different project. Um, and a lot of that's going to depend on the potential cost of what... Uh, you know, an engine's going to cost if you have to do that. And it's also going to depend on your skill level. Do you feel competent that you can actually take an engine out and put one back in? I think most of us are fairly mechanical inclined. That's a big project, but we don't feel too overwhelmed by it. Um, if you do, there's lots more YouTube tutorials to watch here, too. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, is it going to cost... Is it going to be worth what I'm going to do for it? Um, and actually, um, as I was looking at this, um, this I found these two different cars with different engines in them. And actually, um, I found one where I can pick up the 
engine for itself for about 450 bucks. Plus, it's going to cost me nearly $200 to ship it here. Um, the second engine only had about 3,000 more miles on it. Was going to be 700, um, and again another 150 to 200 dollars to ship it. So I was looking at that, and I also happened to notice that both of these cars in these wrecking yards still had the transmissions in them, and with that kind of mileage on them. So I called the wrecking yards, and they said, "Oh yeah, we can sell you both pieces." And I'm looking at it going, "Geez, I can, I can either put a new engine in this thing for." Six hundred fifty, seven hundred fifty dollars, or I can put a whole new drivetrain in it, you know, engine and transmission for around a thousand. It's actually the one I've settled on is going to be just under twelve hundred bucks to get it here for the engine and transmission. But then I get the drivetrain; it's only got eighty-five thousand miles on it, and that's pretty good value to me. Um, it's like I've talked about uh, before. I've um, it, it used to be that when a motor got a hundred thousand miles on it, it was garbage. And we needed a total rebuild and everything, you know, back when I was in high school, which is probably ancient history to most of you guys. But today, I've and my experience has been that the motors themselves usually don't wear out too much. Um, you know, on, on some good brands that are good, well-engineered, there's some stuff that's garbage, but most of what we're going to be dealing with here won't be. Um... But on these new, like GM fuel injected motors, uh, other things around the motor break down, and that's why the cars usually get scrapped or they get in a wreck. And uh, so I've, I've torn into, let's see, I tore into one, this was a Toyota pickup uh, a couple, several years ago that had, I think it was 280,000 miles on it. And when you get it apart, there was almost no wear in the internal parts of that motor. Uh, we did go ahead and do a full rebuild on it, but, you know, the cylinders weren't worn. Uh, the crankshaft was barely worn. Uh, you could have gotten by with just slipping a new set of bearings in it, um, that sort of thing. So that's one of the reasons that I don't balk at uh, buying a used motor uh, in particular. Um, transmissions are kind of the same thing, but they might be maybe a little more risky. I don't know, but I'm willing to take that chance. I've got what I think is a good running transmission anyway. Uh, which, who knows, with that many miles on it, may have been rebuilt before. But uh, I've got those there. They're available to me, so I'm going to give it a shot and try it. Um, there's some really cool resources online that, that help a lot with this, and some people know about them, but I'm going to go ahead and talk for just a second here. My favorite resource for used car parts is a website called car-part.com, or car-part.com, um, and you search that up and what it is it is a uh, what do you call it a collection of all of the wrecking yards in the country now not all obviously but most of the wrecking yards in the company are in the country and in fact in Canada are on there and uh, what I love is that I can type in my 93 Camaro I can search for an engine it asks me which one is it the you know, the V8 or the six, the V6, and I can click on that. And if I enter my uh, zip code in, it will start with the one closest to me and then go down the list. Or you can sort them by price or different things like that. And it'll go down the list and give you a list of every engine in the country that's available for that 93 Camaro. And um, most of them will have a price on them. Uh, sometimes they won't. Um, the different information fields that get filled in. But I like to look for especially when I'm going after engine transmissions, those kind of things, I'm looking for what you know, a low mileage motor in the mileage uh, section there, and then the cost, obviously. And, you know, sometimes you get a low mileage motor and the guy that owns it thinks it's gold-plated and it's super expensive. What was interesting to me, the best mileage motor that I could find for this Camaro was out in California in a yard, and it was actually one of the cheapest motors available in the country um, for that car so I'm pretty stoked about that and I'm putting together the order for that we'll actually uh, talk to him tomorrow to finalize that and then get it shipped to me um, here in my little tiny town that I live in in Utah it's I, we don't get truck freight right here for that company so I'm going to have to drive over to the next town and pick it up but that's not a big deal to me because we go over there quite a bit so 
that's a great resource for these kind of things, and it's something that you need to be aware of. Um, it's a decision-making process. You know, if you if you're working on a three hundred dollar car like I am, and you got a bad motor in it, you find Jesus, they want fifteen hundred bucks for a new motor. Well, all of a sudden, then you start putting yourself in a different category. You know, hey, would I be ahead to find a different car that actually has a decent running motor and things in it, or no, that's still within my budget and the overall scheme of things. That's still, you know, a relatively inexpensive vehicle. So what I did is I went, uh, we went on the Crazy Dad Camaro from sitting at about a thousand to maybe twelve hundred dollars of what we're going to have in it. Now we've added another twelve hundred on top of that, takes it up to a twenty-four hundred dollar project. Um, still, in the overall scope of things, it's kind of hard to have a cool car. Especially a cool old car for 2200 bucks. Trust me, I've been around it a lot. You, you just don't put something together that way. So I looked at it, evaluated it. First, I'm committed to the project, especially since I'm doing a YouTube series on it. Um, and secondly, yeah, it's worth it to me. It's still going to be a low buck project. It is. Anyway, that's uh, kind of where we're at on this deal. So we'll get those coming here pretty quick, and we will probably spend you know the week after that getting that motor pulled out and the new one installed and uh, at that point uh, well first of all that motor will probably come with a good uh, crankshaft sensor in it and the other sensors will probably be good too so it'll save me going out and buying those which would have just been you know 35 to 50 bucks where they just wasted money experimenting on this thing at that point though there's still a possibility I could have a bad computer um, but I found I can go get those at the wrecking yards from, you know, if it's a U pull it yard, I can get one for about 30 bucks. If it's a, an online one, uh, they start around $50. And interestingly enough, this computer in this car comes out of almost anything GM V6 that year. And so it would be pretty easy to find one. So I think we're good there. We've got a lot of potential coming up, and I think this is still going to carry on, keep the project into the uh, the low buck category and I think that's the other thing I was going to say so what if you bought your $300 car like I did and it turned out that the motor and tranny were good in it hey you know then you wouldn't uh, be out this expense in it so um, I'm not saying don't uh, don't buy something but you might get lucky and you might not have to put the engine tranny in it then you can deduct 1200 bucks out of what crazy dad Camaro is going to cost and go I could have a cool car for only about 1200 bucks here and uh, that's the nature of what this channel's about. That's what Crazy Dad Garage is about. Like I said, low buck fun with old cars, and this one's, this one's going to be it. So follow along, enjoy, uh, like and subscribe to our channel, and uh, come along on the ride with us. It's going to be great. Talk to you soon.